We've all seen that crash from Le Mans. Peter Dumbreck on his way to Indianapolis Corner, 1999, in a Mercedes CLR. Here we go. Oh my God, oh my God, the Mercedes has taken off. That's Peter Dumbreck at the wheel of the number five Mercedes. And then there was this crash. Five and a half hours in at Road Atlanta, same portion now driven by Yannick Dalmas, and oh, here we go. In spectacular fashion, the flip, he lands, he explodes. And then there was this crash. Now watch the top of your picture as Bill Oberlin's Bimmer catches air at the top of the same hill that launched Yannick Dalmas two years ago. I think it's safe to say that in the late 90s, racing cars were quite literally taking off. So what caused these cars to take flight? Well, the main cause was something called pitch sensitivity. The pitch angle is the angle between the underbody of the car and the tarmac with a positive angle, meaning the car is pointing slightly towards the sky, and a negative angle, meaning that it's pitched downwards into the tarmac. Most racing cars use a negative pitch angle between minus 1.5 and minus 2.5 degrees. That means the frontal area is larger, which increases downforce. But in this era of Le Mans, they decided they wanted to go for top speed rather than cornering speed. That meant they went for a much more neutral pitch angle between minus 0.7 and zero degrees. A more neutral pitch angle means a higher top speed. Now, one way to suddenly make a car's pitch angle positive in a bad way is to drive quickly over the brow of a hill. Research has shown that the downforce of the Mercedes front axle only decreased by a small amount in the run up to zero degrees pitch. But once driving over the brow of a hill and reaching plus two degrees of pitch, the downforce at the front of the car decreased massively, turning into a lift force. Not ideal for a racing car. The point of no return was plus 2.4 degrees of pitch at top speed, with the downforce at the rear axle being completely cancelled out by lift force at the front axle. From that point on, the front of the car lifted clear of the tarmac, the pitch angle increased rapidly, and the car was sent quickly up into the heavens. The pitch sensitivity wasn't helped by the Mercedes' long front overhangs. The front overhang is the section of bodywork forward of the front axle, and the Mercs was 10 centimeters longer than any other car in the field. Seeing as torque is a force multiplied by a distance, that long overhang acted as a paddle once the air got underneath it, further rotating the Mercedes about its rear axle. After the series of accidents in the late 90s, the FIA stepped in and firstly decreased the severity of the hill at Indianapolis Corner, but they also told the Le Mans teams to open up their front wheel arches to release air pressure. That move released air from underneath the front axle and made the cars less susceptible to lifting unexpectedly. Also, overhangs on Le Mans prototypes of today are restricted to between 750 and 1000 millimetres, a decrease over the cars of the 90s. Thankfully, through these changes, we haven't seen a crash quite as bad as that since. The LMP GTs were so goddamn pretty, but wow, were they unstable. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and drop down into the comments to tell us what you'd like us to explain next.